Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. 2022 is coming to an end, and it has been an absolutely fantastic year for astrophotography, and I would love to share a photo with you from almost every month and the equipment that I use to take them. So please join me in today's episode of No. I started out the year in everybody's favorite winter constellation, Orion, and I was obsessive over shooting a space horse. No, not that space horse. For this target, I went with my iOptron Skyguider Pro Star Tracker, a astro-modified Canon T5i, a Radian 61 telescope with a focal length of 275 millimeters, this ZWO auto guider, and the ZWO ASI Air to control the auto guiding and the camera. No filters were used in this photograph and it was taken from my Bortel 3 backyard. I give you the horse head and flame nebula. Back in the spring of 2021, I came into a little bit of money and I went ahead and ordered my very first go-to equatorial mount, the EQ6R Pro. Unfortunately, that mount was backordered, so it did not reach my house until January of 2022. Is it here yet? No. Is it here yet? No. Is it here yet? No. Is it here yet? No! And so this became my main rig for most of 2022. I've got the EQ6R Pro go-to mount. I've got the Canon T5i Astro Modified Camera, the Radian 61 Telescope, the ZWO Auto Guider. Around back here, I have the ASI Air mounted to the telescope so I can control everything. And this right here is the Pegasus Powerbox Micro. It supplies power to the go-to mount, the ASI Air, and my camera, plus my two dew heaters for the telescope and the guide scope. Since I had go-to functionality for the very first time, I decided to shoot a target that I never would have considered with a star tracker because it would have been too difficult to frame up. And that is the Flaming Star and the Tadpole Nebula, a group of nebulae. So let's check this out. For March, I wanted to continue the trend of photographing things I wouldn't have normally tried with a star tracker. So I would get on Instagram and see what friends were photographing. And my friend Ralph from his YouTube channel, Horror and Coffee, photographed the Seagull Nebula, but called it the Rodan Nebula. And if you can't already tell by the figures behind me, I'm a huge Godzilla fan, like huge. So I absolutely had to go out and photograph a picture of Rodan in outer space. For the Rodan <coughs> Seagull Nebula, I used the exact same setup as February. The EQ6R Pro, the Canon T5i, the Radian 61 telescope, the ZW Auto Guider, and an ASI Air to control everything. I really took advantage of the fact that I could use this go-to mount and return to the same target and keep the same framing night after night. So I actually photographed this for three nights in a row and got about eight hours worth of data, the longest I've ever gotten on a target. So I give you the Rodan Nebula. Springtime for astronomers is known as galaxy season, and it's when the Earth is facing away from our galaxy and off into interstellar space, and you can see lots of far away distant galaxies. The problem is, most of those galaxies are really tiny and you need massive telescopes to photograph them. <laughs> you, can't you can't afford, afford that. that. Well, a very generous gentleman by the name of Michael Sullivan donated a rather large telescope to my cause, and I got to try out galaxy season for myself. Well, here it is, my big Bertha galaxy busting telescope. I've named it Ghidorah Hunter. And for those of you who might know who Ghidorah is, 
you're cool. So this is a Celestron C11. It's an 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It weighs 27 pounds, so it's really pushing it on this EQ6R Pro whose weight limit is 44 pounds, but technically you're really not supposed to go all the way to the weight limit. I'm having to use three counterweights just to balance, three 11 pound counterweights. So that's 33 pounds of counterweight. For auto guiding, I'm using a 60 millimeter SV Boney guide scope with my ZWO guide cam. Most people say you should use off axis guiding for a big telescope like this, but I was just not ready to take that leap yet. Hell, I wasn't even sure if I could figure out how to use this big thing. I even have too short of a dovetail to attach it to the scope. This thing is supposed to reach all the way up to here and connect right here. So I've got to get a longer one. So there were all sorts of problems getting this, but I did manage to catch something. And so now I'm going to show you my very first photograph of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Springtime also marks the return of Milky Way season. If you're willing to get up around four o'clock in the morning, you'll see the Milky Way returning to the night sky. I decided to try a Milky Way nightscape using a technique I haven't really done before using a camera flash. And this would be practice for something I would do later on in the year. For this project, I used a setup very similar to this. I went back to the old Ioptron Skyguider Pro Star Tracker. I say it's similar, not the same, because I did not use this lens. I used a Tamron 24-70 f2.8 lens that was later stolen in August. So unfortunately, I no longer have a Milky Way lens. But at the time, I did. And the only other thing that's really different is to attach my camera to the ball head that I have on the Star Tracker. I didn't use a Arca Swiss plate that was quite this long. I used one that was tiny, but I have this long one now and that's what I prefer to use. But you know, any old Arca Swiss plate will do to attach your camera to a ball head. For the foreground, I just took a selfie of myself standing in a field holding a camera flash above my head. Once I took that, I turned the Star Tracker on and that's when I started shooting the Milky Way. I have a full tutorial of this process in this video right up here or down in the description below. On the first week of June, my friends John and Heather took me on a canoe out to an island in the Mississippi River. From there, we got to explore beautiful sandy beaches and almost jungle-like terrain. And of course, it was the perfect location for a Milky Way session or two. Now for the island, I once again have my Milky Way set up. I have my iOptron Skyguider Pro Star Tracker. For the camera, I actually used a Canon 6D that was not astro modified and the Tamron 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. They are not displayed here because like I said earlier, they were stolen in August. I would take my setup right to the edge of the island at dusk and capture a foreground. And then I would wait for the stars in the Milky Way to rise, which was about midnight to one o'clock in the morning when they finally got high enough over the tree line where I could actually photograph them. I would turn the star tracker on and photograph my Milky Way. I would also do something similar with John and Heather holding the flash with the light orb in it, just like I did back in April. I just wanted to create a moment where it looked like they reached out and grabbed a ball of starlight and, and were sharing it between the two of them with the Milky Way in the background. I hope you enjoy my June Island Milky Way photos. Another wonderful thing about the month of June is the return of the constellation Cygnus, which became my favorite constellation to photograph in the year of 2022. And inside Cygnus, there are many targets, but in June, I went after a supernova remnant, a star that exploded long ago. For this target, I went back to Old Faithful because you just don't get much more reliable results than this. The EQ6R Pro mount, the Canon T5i, the Radian 61, the ZWO Auto Guider, and the ASI Air. Once again, I used the Optolong L Enhance filter because this target is full of hydrogen alpha and oxygen three, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I give you the Veil Nebula. Oh, 
Up until this point, my rig with the EQ6R Pro was limited to just shooting at my house because it requires electricity. But in July, I purchased this big ass battery. This made my bigger rig a little more portable. And from my yard, I do not have a clear view to the south, but the target I wanted to shoot was in the south. Now I was able to take my rig across the street and not have to worry about running long extension cords. And the target I was looking for is a combination of three different types of nebulae, emission, reflection, and dark. And because it's made up of three different kinds, it's called the Trifid. The Trifid Nebula can be quite small and usually fits in nicely in the same frame as the Lagoon Nebula, but I wanted to get up close and personal with it this time, so I decided to go with Ghidorah Hunter, my Celestron C11, the EQ6R Pro, and the Canon Astro Modified T5i with the SV Boney Auto Guider setup. And this is the month when I mailed my Canon 6D and my Tamron 24-70 lens back to myself from Washington DC and received an empty package. The post office stole my stuff. No more Milky Way photos, but August does mark the return of my favorite target in all of astrophotography, the Andromeda Galaxy. It was the first thing I ever made a YouTube video about, and I always look forward to photographing it again and again every year. For Andromeda, I went back to this rig again, the EQ6R Pro, Canon T5i, Radian 61 telescope, the ZWO auto guider, and the ASI Air to control everything. This time for a filter, I tried the Optolong L Pro instead of the L Enhance. This is much better for broadband targets such as galaxies, and it really helps calm those stars down in Andromeda. The constellation Cygnus has a bunch of amazing targets hidden inside of it, so why not try to photograph them all at once? I decided to use a similar technique as to when I tried to photograph the Milky Way up close and personal with a Nifty 50. So Cygnus was a complete experiment. The widest lens I had at the time was the 50 millimeter. That was the only lens I could really use to capture the entire constellation. Because that lens is so light, I had to use the iOptron Skyguider Pro. And you might be wondering, why on earth is there a camera flash on top of the camera? Well, instead of attaching a ball head directly to the front of the Star Trekker, like I normally do with a Nifty 50 because it's so light, I decided to attach a Vixen dovetail to the bottom of my camera. And so I can attach my camera to a Vixen dovetail saddle and it works more like an equatorial mount. Why did I want to do this? really just in case I wanted to shoot for multiple nights. It would be easier for me to frame up the target more accurately. But even with this shorter counterweight rod, one counterweight pulled almost all the way up, I still couldn't balance this setup. This is just way too light. So I had to add a little weight on top. So I just put a camera flash on top just to add a little weight. And now it balances just fine. It also balances in declination. So if you've seen any of my past videos, you know how obsessive I am about that. In the end, all this is overkill and I probably could have just done the ball head right in front of the Star Tracker and gotten fine results, but I just wanted to try something new. For me this year, October was the month of reflections. Guys, my reflection's being an asshole. No, I, absolutely nothing. I don't even know how that, you, you know what, Never mind. I was able to photograph two reflection nebulae. Now a reflection nebula is a nebula that is basically the light from a very bright star reflecting off of interstellar dust. The two I chose this year, of course, the Pleiades, which is actually a, a cluster of stars, and just in time for Halloween, the Witch Head Nebula. For the Pleiades, I pretty much used the old faithful setup, it worked just fine, but for the Witch Head, the Canon T5i and the Radian 61 were a little too zoomed in, so I wanted to try a full frame sensor camera. So I rented a Canon 6D Mark II from Lens Rentals, and that gave me the perfect framing. You can see more about that in my YouTube video right up here about photographing the Witch Head Nebula. 
All right, here are my reflection targets. Here in the United States, November is the month of Thanksgiving, and for this holiday, I went out to the California and Nevada desert with my girlfriend, and I photographed the night sky under Death Valley and Area 51. You can check my adventure out in my latest YouTube video here. For my trip out to the desert, I brought the old faithful Milky Way setup. My tripod, the iOption Skyguider Pro Star Tracker, the Canon T5i, and a wide-angle lens. Instead of using this lens right here, I actually rented the Tamron 24-70, the lens that was stolen from me back in August, because I just love that lens and I had to have it. Just like with my Milky Way photos, I would shoot the foreground at dusk or dawn, and then when the stars were out, I'd turn the star tracker on, and that's when I shot the constellation Cygnus at Area 51. And so I decided to end the year in the same place where it began, in everybody's favorite winter constellation, Orion. Because the majority of the month of December was a giant rainstorm, I wanted to do something very safe if I got a night of clear skies. So I went with the number one beginner target, the Orion Nebula. You just can't go wrong there. Well, I didn't call this my main rig of 2022 for nothing. It's just so dependable and consistent every single time. If you don't know all these pieces at this point, you weren't paying attention earlier in the video. Before I show you my final image and leave you with that, I just wanna say thank you so much to all my supporters in the past few years. Looking forward to sharing my 2023 journey with you, and I'd love for you to share your journeys with me. If you like the video, leave me a like, and if you're into learning anything about astrophotography or just coming along on my journey, please subscribe. All right, guys, that's gonna do it. As always, stay spacey. See you next time. Thank you.